Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Healing Conversations. My name is Einav Avni with Untangled Healing, and today with me, Steph Pound. Steph, so lovely to have you here. Hello. Good morning, and thank you, Einav, for having me along onto one of your wonderful healing conversations. So glad to be part of it. Excellent. Today's conversation is going to be amazing. I'm already really looking forward to it. Uh, but before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I suppose it's where I am now. I am a qualified herbalist, uh, wellbeing coach. Um, I've got qualifications in herbal medicine, bark flower remedies, and most recently on my favourite topic, which is going to be the focus for today, is menopause awareness. Um, but that always wasn't what I what I was. Um, I'd spent 30 years in the corporate world working for a big PLCs and my menopause journey took me on a different path and through my own chaotic menopause experience over the last five years it took me where my purpose is in now to helping and supporting women on their own menopause journey because I know what it's like to be there but it's also I think more about how we start reframing the menopause from something that's medicalized, something to be feared, to be fought, but turning it into what it actually is, it's our transformation and it's it's our rite of passage. Um, with the seasons we go through from spring to summer to autumn, as we do in our own cycles of life, where we go from our spring to our summer to our autumn. And I think the menopause is when we get to our late summer and into our autumn. And we all know autumn can be the most beautiful of seasons with it comes into full colour, it's fruitful, bountiful. And I think we should start welcoming this change. But it can be a challenging change because you are going through so much that's happening to your body. And I like to liken it that I'm on a dragonfly quest. The dragonfly stays as a nymph for many, many years down in the water with all of its other nymphs. Then it goes, cocoons itself, goes into this period of change and then comes out as the most beautiful dragonfly. That, I think, is a metaphor for the menopause and transformation. For a lot of our lives, we are there, the busy workers on the corporate treadmills, the mothers, the daughters, we're there, but then we get to our, we go into our cocoon in the menopause, and that is a lot of time for going inward, for finding ourselves. It truly is a transformation, and but so much of women will struggle and the challenges. I know from my own personal experiences of my challenges, which we'll probably can touch it on, but. Um, it's, uh, I'm passionate about supporting and empowering women because we will be post-menopausal probably for 20, 30 years of our life. It's mm -hmm. a long time. It's about that new phase of life, how into our autumn years and what can we bring to the autumn of our lives and bring to society, I think, as well, because it's a lot of how society and culture, especially in Western society and culture, think of it as something to be feared, anti-aging, you're getting old, you're past it, it's something you need to battle, to fight. Mm -hmm. But actually, there is purpose to us. If, we're, if there was no purpose to the menopause, we would still be going on being fertile until we were our 70s or 80s. But we have the menopause, one of few animals and mammals that do actually have the menopause. So actually, what is it there and what's actually now our role? And it can be a time to redefine what our purpose is. What we've been doing for the past sort of 20, 30 years might not fit with us now. And it's a time for reinvention, finding, I think, also finding your true selves. And I, so that was one of the things I discovered on my menopause journey, and it might be why I sort of struggled, but it was finding my true authentic self. 
And that, let's just pause there for a second because I'd love to hear a little bit more about your journey and, as you say, the, the uh, passage of discovery to, 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 to where you are now and how you're supporting other women. So, so tell me a little bit about your own journey of how it, how it all started. And um, My menopause journey started in about six years ago now, which is 2017. Um, <coughs> I've worked for the same big corporate company since I was 21. I started there in 1992. So I'd been going through, I'd worked my way up. I'd become senior manager position in a large organization um and I started actually going on a coaching program and that was started but at that same time I I've never had kids so I actually started menopause early um at the age of about 45 so which is quite early um and I'd had operations removal of ovarian cysts and everything like that and I'd had um the coil so it'd been masking it and when they took that out because I was having problems with it then I never had any period or anything then they went well no actually your hormone levels are changing you're on what they now we know is the perimenopause and going through it it'd been up but then going through that journey I suffered very much with the brain fog anxiety depression um i had a major breakdown in 2018 but also as well i was thinking that it was to do with stress i was working in a very stressful environment the plc that i was working for went into administration uh which is no mean feat and when you're working in that environment plus also as well i started to deal with my elderly mother with her health concerns and everything else so menopause never comes along at a convenient time in our lives. It comes through at probably one of the most stressful times of our lives. We can be juggling our, our corporate roles, our responsibility now to our parents, where we become the carer, not the child. We've also, in some women, they can be dealing with their children growing up, changing the nest. There's a lot of dynamics going on. And I just sort of was muddling through, come back, Man managing the stress levels and then 2020 we all know with lockdown I lost my dear wonderful mum just before um lockdown um she was quite an inspiration to me and then went through the company changing oh I mean all the, this time as well I was discovering the world of herbs flower remedies and I was all, all the time as this I was studying to get my qualifications in herbal medicines, which I got with distinction. So I put myself under a little bit of pressure. Um, yeah. But that was where I was starting to find there was something more. And that was about that discovery. And then in 2021, what we yeah, 21, I had another breakdown again. Very much plagued through me was anxiety and depression were key. And I took time out went to the doctors they just wouldn't put me on antidepressants which i didn't take because i knew that wasn't the answer but it was at that time i took the time out i started putting all the pieces of the puzzle together and everything pinpointed to the menopause at that point in 21 i was three years postmenopausal, so i'd had my last period in when i was 49 so <clears throat> no 48 so I was then post, but I started to put the pieces together. And the reason I'd struggled at work, not it wasn't the stress, but it was the brain fog. It what was happening to my body. I'd fallen over and I'd sort of had a little fracture on my thumb. And it's like there's little warning signs and bells, and then it was like that aha moment. And I'm like, ah. But then there was also a lot of grief in there as well. I'd lost my own wonderful mum. I was an only child. I'd not had children myself and it's the menopause is a defining point it's like that's it and there was I had a lot of grief around with only my mum but not being a mum and that I think was part of that grieving process but as I went worked through it then I realised that, well, there's other ways that I can bring my legacy and I can help. It's not just about having a child. And 
there is that was part of the healing for me and that also was i think was about the turning point of when i shifted my perspective on the menopause that actually we go through it's our transformation i am and it was like i could feel the layers being shed off me and actually i could finally feel that i was me after all these years i suddenly thought this is me and, and what you're saying is is actually there's so many different things that I, I want to touch on, because as you say at the beginning, you don't know that you know maybe it's the, the perimenopause, maybe it's you you really put it down to stress and 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 to the environment and everything that you go through, uh, and then uh, you know slowly slowly as you say you you're starting to to piece things together and think now I understand it a little bit differently, um, but how. Do you think, do you feel or do you know uh, in your experience that is this how it is for most women? Do we, most of us, go into this period of, of the perimenopause and the actual menopause not knowing what it is, what to expect? I think and we do. We, it is quite often that, and some women we can sell through will hardly have, and I, I like to refer to more just not symptoms but as signs of the menopause. It's like this 30 30 recognized signs from the most well-known like hot flushes brain fog but then you've also got the sort of funnier ones a bit like metallic taste in your mouth you've got the aches and pains your heart palpitations they're mm. all signs that your body is going through that change and adjusting and preparing you for your next stage of life it's um, where your hormones that you would have for child rearing and now well you don't need those anymore we're switching those off but your body is just because they do so much in your body I mean estrogen is sort of key in brain function so when your estrogen levels are dropping then you will get the brain fog and everything else one of the herbs that I found that are really great for um, brain fog is Tulsi which is the holy basil and and rosemary they are great for sort of helping it but women will quite often be going through the perimenopause stage thinking something's not quite right but thinking oh just brushing it off but then not actually giving them time to think actually I'm going through the perimenopause I am changing and that acknowledgement of yes it's that time and especially a lot I think with women these days where they may be on um the pill or have the coil in that it can actually mask some of the sort of symptoms and actually women say it's actually helped them to get through that sort of phase but actually it's probably masked it so they're not actually sort of experience it so much um but women will also just there's so much other stuff going through their life and especially with stress yeah. stress and the menopause don't go very well together because we know that stress can aggravate a lot of things can create more with your anxiety levels increase with stress and so can depression and things like that so it's a bit of a vicious circle with stress and managing stress is always one of the key things anyway with the menopause because if you manage your stress then that can help with your signs and how you experience and make it a bit better um so yeah i think it's and each woman is different every woman's menopause journey will be unique to them um with whatever's going on in their life you can't say that there's a one size fits all which i think sometimes if we go say to like the gps or things they will just try and fit you in a box and they only tend to look at that particular symptom i know in my experience where i went out they just focused in on the anxiety and depression right it was only when i went back later on and I went on the HRT for a while just to get myself back into the balance. It was me that went to the GP and went, right, okay, I've put all the pieces together now. It's menopause, and right, I want to talk you through on, on this. It wasn't them saying, well, have you thought that it could be the menopause? Do you want to try this? It was me making my own decisions and finding it out for myself. And I think that's when I started thinking, this is how I want to help women is making sure that they feel supported and empowered to make the decisions right for you so that they can then go and have the conversations with their GP, 
have the conversations at work because they may need to make adjustments. Um, and the impact on menopause and the workplace is quite staggering. I think in a recent Fawcett Society su survey, uh, one in 10 women left the workforce because of the menopause. That equated to about 330,000 women in the UK. Okay. But, but so just tell me for a second, at what stage are you starting, you know, working with the women that come to you? At what, at what stage do you catch them? Is it at the beginning? Is it as they're going through it? Is it it's at various, it's at various stages. Um, I mean, they can come through to me. And quite often when at the start of the program that I, I've developed, um, what I call the Wisdom Years, my 13-week menopause support program um, to help women support and empower them through their menopause journey. And at the start of it, we go through a deep dive session, um, have a number of tools to actually then establish where they are on their menopause journey because they might not actually know where they are. Mm. Um, and it can be that they're just starting out in their perimenopause. Um, they would then want to get supported. But actually, some women will actually be, they're actually at the menopause stage or postmenopausal. And then how do they support them on into later life? It's it's understanding with them, and they might, and that's at the first point is under understanding women of where you are on your journey right. as the starting point. So it's um, there's a lot of discovery at the beginning of the program, um, delving deep into what's going on in their bodies and in their lives, and then putting the pieces together. And so, right, we know where you are on the journey now, and also about encouraging women to get in tune with their bodies mm -hmm. i think um we've come quite out of tune with ourselves we are nature we are cyclic in nature um but once you start tuning into your body and you start recognizing the signs of perimenopause and menopause then once you start knowing what they are and understanding them you can then start to help improving and making them your journey better by yeah, then acknowledging and then what help and support can I have to, to help those signs. So it's really, really tuning into yourselves and and the positive, oh, excuse me, posi positive mindset as well, I think is a, a key. And um, that's why I've totally flipped it in not focusing on the symptoms and what we're lacking. Yeah. but focusing on bringing the positivity and how we can make things better for our journeys. Yeah. So is it, when you were saying, I mean, I love what you're saying, and so so much really needed, as you say, you yourself didn't really recognise the signs as they were happening, and I'm sure many women don't as well. So, So to have that conversation around, hey, let's just pause for a second, take that, you know, test to see what stage you are in and then find the support. Um, it sounds so beautiful to me. And I'm just curious because, of course, you mentioned the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the wellness before and also the, the herbalism. So I'm wondering, are you bringing, are you combining these two worlds, uh, worlds together? Or how, how yeah. do you, <clears throat> the person or the woman, re recognizes where she's at? What, yeah. What is next? Yeah, so as part of the um, support program that we'll do, um, we've got a load of workbooks. I've got um, a journal that they will oh, that they will have, and it, in it they can capture all of their signs, but also their thoughts and ideas. But also, I'm bringing in it to it suggestions for herbs that can help to support them through various stages we know sage is very good for hot flushes um, but also as well how diet nutrition can help to support your body through mm. this time um, so lots of suggestions for diet nutrition exercise as well because that's a key area for, but it's, it's actually sort of supporting you as you go through that journey of your body of change and transformation and one of the ones that I love working with are the bark flower remedies um, they were a huge support to me through my own menopause journey and I I utilized them quite a lot because they work on the vibrational 
energy centers um they help us in time and especially with things like anxiety one of the greatest things i had with the anxiety was the overthinking mind and constant worry thought i'd over analyze everything from panic about trying to find a parking space and i'd even be going on google maps i'd be checking it working out my route and your mind is just got to and the flower remedies like white chestnut are great for just helping you to put you back into perspective quieten the mind and help bring you through so i think the flower remedies are really great tools to help support women through the menopause and also things like walnuts that's one of the great uh, flower remedies for going through change even change from moving job moving house but the biggest change of all is the menopause and it, it helps and supports you as you go through and the vibrational energy that they bring i think it's just a lovely part of healing and it's um and as part of doing the program um i do three uh, personalized blend blends uh, as part of the 13 week program so and as you go through the program the flower remedies that you would need would probably change as different yeah. things come up and you work through so i've incorporated them into my program because i think they're just great support tools to work with um and, and, that, and, and oh, sorry sorry yeah. <laughs> that's all right <laughs> I mean, I, I was just going to ask if are you working mainly like one on one or is it a group? Because I, I, I can. It's one on one. It's yeah. one on one, and I like um, we do like a ninety minute deep dive to start with, and then there'll be fortnightly sixty minute coaching sessions, and then it ends with a deep dive um, success uh, session at the end of the thirteen weeks, and but the support in between as well through like the Telegram messaging and different sort of um, learning tools and little video snippets and things and I keep them the support going through the coaching session but it's very one-on-one -on -one. but it it's a safe <coughs> excuse me it's a safe space for yeah. women to talk through what's going through it's there's no judgment actually one of the greatest things you can have at this time is just have someone there to listen to you support you and help you process what's going on yeah. Uh, yeah we can have people around us like our our family and our nearest and dearest but they they tend to always sometimes see things from their perspective yeah. having someone that you can just talk things through and it's been that talking through and processing it helps you to get that clarity and yeah. helps you to go through your own healing and just be there for women i think it's um it, it, it sounds very containing like very allowing and and it sounds so so important but i, I just want to touch on something that you mentioned uh which i think really really touched me actually and and that's the making sense of you know what is to come now as you said you know for you, you lost your mum and having, you know, not having kids of your own, it's like, what, what is my, what am, what am I doing here now? And how, how do you support women in finding, figuring that out for themselves now, even regardless of, you know, if they have kids or not, but making sense of the new era of, of who we are? I think that is all part of this discovery and part of the processing as well. But it's also, I think, going back to allowing ourselves to grieve as part of the transformation because there is a grieving element there and I certainly had that and I think my menopause especially with with my mum it was grief on a lot of levels with not just like my mum not being a mum and then the legacy issue mm -hmm. and it supported and that was I got through the support and it was just through talking and supporting and then but then i found other ways that the having a kid is not the be all or end all there are other ways to leave my legacy one of them being supporting women i've got a book that i'm just starting to start writing 
on my menopause experience and journey. So that's another legacy. Um, I started working with girl guiding and I, I work with a ranger unit. So I found other ways mm -hmm. to be what I said termed as be a mum. <laughs> <I'll leave you. laughs> yeah. I think that was what then helped me. And I think it's helping women to work through and find and actually, if, if you find what your passions are, you will find your purpose. Yeah. And it's, <clears throat> a, it's, it's a scary time as well because it's everything we've ever known. Yeah. It's thrown up into the air. And then that fear of the future, what does it hold? And it's. Yeah. Uh, and, and having your support, and, you know, it sounds incredible. And. And this journal, is it now available for people to, to just... Well, it comes as part of the programme. So it comes as part of my Wenipal programme, which is just about to go live on my website today. So this is brilliant timing. Okay. <laughs> so people will be able to find out more on my website. Um, so. Follow me on Facebook as well. I, I like to delve into the world of herbs on, on my website as well and tell their stories. Yes. I think and, and we need for to me, hear I, their I, stories. I, I like all this, uh, the, you know, the nature and the, the doing the, the things naturally uh, with the flowers, as you mentioned, and the herbs. It sounds it sounds very, very supportive and, and, and it sounds wonderful. Uh, after after the conversation, I will leave all your details for women to, to be able to, to get in touch um, as they wish. And of course, later on when I upload it to YouTube. Uh, so, Steph, just any last message before we, we need to, to finish our, our conversation today? What would you like women to, to take from, from this conversation today? Well, you've probably heard me mention that I call my programme the Wisdom Years Menopause Programme. So the wis why the Wisdom Years? I think the menopause journey takes us to our Wisdom Years, where we are, wise with experience, in tune with ourselves, self-aware, discerning, owning our power, and marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. And Absolutely. the world needs us. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Steph, it's been a wonderful uh, talking with you today and, and hearing about your journey and how you support other women on this journey. I, I really think it's so important, as as you say, you know, for yourself, you didn't recognize that it was all starting and attributed some of the changes to other things. And actually to have someone that can guide you and say, right, I know where you are. I see you. You're not on your own. I'll help you through it. And actually, it doesn't have to be as scary and overwhelming as it is when we go through it by ourselves. But actually... I'm here for you. So it sounds so so giving and so important. So I was really uh, excited to hear about everything that you do. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thank you so much for being no, here with us today. No, thank, thank you, you very much, too. Thank you.